we are going to explore the HR module in ServiceNow. Uh, Donald and Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. So I'm Shruti Kumtekar and I'm the Marketing Manager at Globes. Uh, here's the agenda for today's webinar. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to go over housekeeping and then talk a little about Cloves, who we are, uh, followed by a presentation on the HR module in ServiceNow, and finally, Q&A. Housekeeping. Um, so first of all, the webinar will be recorded. So uh, if you're missing something, don't worry. You will be able to access the webinar later. Q&A process, uh, as I mentioned, the Q&A session is towards the end of the webinar. Uh, you're going to be muted. Uh, if you have any questions, then please use the questions or comment section uh, in your GoToWebinar control panel. And uh, towards the end of the webinar, I will read out the questions and our speakers will, uh, will answer them. Uh, if you're running out of time and we have a lot of questions, then we will answer your questions offline. Uh, if you have any other questions that are not directly related to the webinar, uh, please email me at shruti shruti at closing.com or sales at closing.com. Uh, and if you want to know about latest updates from Cloves or you want to access any of our previous webinars, uh, please visit our Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, or our YouTube channel. Uh, a little bit about Cloves. Uh, we are a ServiceNow partner since 2011, and we are based out of Santa Clara, uh, very close to their ServiceNow headquarters. We are a full ServiceNow shop with uh, about 150 plus customers and close to 50 consultants, and we've been executing projects uh, globally. Uh, like I said, we offer uh, many different services, and our focus this year has been on CSM, that is uh, Customer Service Management, End user portals and mostly HR under the uh, enterprise service management. Our speakers today are going to be Donald Hill from Varian Medical Systems and Mike Nelson from Cloves. Uh, with that, Donald, I'm going to pass control to you and you'll be able to share your screen. Great, thank you. If everyone on the call can be just one minute to share my screen. Okay. Okay, Donald, so I'm able to see your screen. Uh, and which of my screens are you seeing? I'm seeing the slide which says implementing the service now which are module. Perfect, perfect. So uh, good morning for uh, those of you on the, the West Coast or afternoon for those in other regions. Uh, my name is Donald Hill and I'm the Director of HR Systems and Analytics at Varian Medical Systems. And uh, joining me on the call is, is Mike Nelson, who was the uh, primary technical consultant from Cloves for our implementation of the ServiceNow HR module. And so uh, as we go through, if you have any technical questions, Mike will jump in to, to answer those. Uh, now, I, I really want to spend the majority of the time showing you our system, uh, showing you what we've done in the tool. Uh, but I did want to kind of set the stage first, uh, starting with uh, who are we, who is Varian? So Varian Medical Systems, uh, we're a medical device company, and we create uh, the radiation therapy and proton therapy machines that are used to treat cancer. Uh, so we have over 7,500 uh, employees in 35 different countries, and our machines are used to treat over 100,000 patients per day. Uh, we have three main uh, radiation therapy uh, machines, our C-Series, our TrueBeam, and our Halcyon, which uh, Halcyon was just released this year. And on the proton therapy uh, side, we have our, our probeam machines. Now, um, I've been at Varian for over 16 years, and for the last decade, I've been uh, on the HR side of the business. And at Varian, we had, uh, up until recently, a very traditional HR, um, where our HR business partners would quite often have to juggle the strategic work that they were trying to do with the business, along with uh, the transactional work. Uh, and including some data entry, and quite often it would make it difficult for them to uh, be able to, to fully do their job on the strategic side because they get so bogged down with, with the uh, more uh, tedious aspects. So what we decided to do was to implement a shared service model. 
So um, what, what we introduced was what we call HR Connect, which is our, our shared service centers. And we currently have one in Atlanta, and we're in the process of implementing one in Budapest. And the purpose of uh, our shared service center is to, to take on all the transactional work. So it's things like uh, interview scheduling, sending out offer letters, uh, data entry into our um, different HR systems. We use SAP and success factors for a lot of our, our um, HR systems. Uh, and so with the HR Connect group, uh, they, we were able to centralize those processes and take some of that work off of the shoulders of the HR business partners and, uh, and our HR administrators. And this allowed our HR business partners to focus more on the strategic, strategic aspects of the, their jobs and to help support the businesses that they work with. Um, so these are two of the pillars of our HR, but the third pillar is what we call our centers of expertise. Uh, and so for, for these, we have a center of expertise for talent acquisition that handles all of our recruiting uh, type of work. We have our total rewards which handles uh, compensation, benefits, et cetera. We have talent management, uh, which handles performance goals and a lot of other, other um, talent related aspects. And then the group that I run is the HR systems and analytics, where we, we manage all the different software systems we have and are, are getting more and more involved in the analytics space with, uh, with the company data. So uh, one of the things that we knew that was in order to move to this model, we were gonna to need to have a case management tool in place. Uh, prior to this, if, if somebody had a, a question or an issue, uh, they would go to their local HR business partner or their local HR administrator. Quite often that person was in the same building as them. They could walk over and talk to them or they could pick up the phone and call them. Uh, and uh, while this worked on a smaller scale, uh, we, we knew that if we were gonna to go to a centralized model, we really needed to get away from managing all, all the requests by emails and spreadsheets and really go with case management tools. So um, we looked at several different vendors and we decided to go with ServiceNow for this. Um, our IT group was already using ServiceNow and uh, what we'd seen in the tool, uh, we were very happy with. The reporting and a lot of the backend capability really worked great uh, for our IT needs. And we felt when we saw the HR module that it was really gonna give us the extra uh, information and capabilities that we needed as well as um, segregation so that you know, our IT people can't see our HR data and, and vice versa. So uh, when we, we uh, decided to go with ServiceNow, we knew that there was gonna be a big requirement for consulting. We were gonna need somebody to help us develop uh, the forms, to, uh, create the interfaces, and do a lot of the other configuration work that we needed. Uh, so we decided to go with Close uh, for that work, and we did that for several reasons. One is that Close was a known partner. Our IT group had been working with them for years and just absolutely loved the work that they'd done. Uh, we also asked around with other customers and found that they had uh, a great reputa reputation outside of Varian as well. So that combined with our experience with them gave us, gave us the confidence in them. Uh, we also priced out several vendors and, and they had a very competitive price. And the final reason, which really has paid off during the implementation was the expertise. Uh, one thing I've found, I've, I've done a lot of software implementations, and I've found that quite often third-party partners will actually have more senior consultants on their staff than, than the vendor themselves, and that's really proven to be the case here. There were several times during our implementation that we said, hey, we want to do this or we want to do that, and we'd hear from service. Now, well, I don't think that can be done with out-of-the-box functionality, and we'd go to our close consultants, they'd pull in one of their experts, and that expert would figure out a way to, to do it with out-of-the-box functionality, no customizations required. And it's really that, that senior level of expertise that we were looking for in a partner. And we were very happy with the, the results that we got uh, from our, our partnership with Close. Uh, so I, I wanna jump into the demo in just a minute, but uh, as I go through it, there, there were several um, requirements that we had from the project. Uh, and one of them was uh, driving adoption and self-service. We were really asking our, our managers and our employees to go through a big change. There's a comfort in being able to go directly to your HR business partner with every question you have and walk up the hall and talk to them. Uh, there's a comfort in having an admin in your building that you can go and talk to. Uh, and what we were asking them to do is quite often talk to somebody who was in a different state or potentially in a different country. We're, we're asking them to start doing some self-service and going into a tool and hopefully having the tool answer those questions for them. And one of the biggest risks we had is if that system wasn't user-friendly, 
very easy to use and give them the information they need, we were not going to drive adoption. They were going to get tired of it and they were going to go right back to their HR business partner and their, their uh, HR administrators and our project was going to be a failure. So we, we wanted to make sure that we had a very user-friendly system that provided them with all of the information they need as quickly and easily as possible. Uh, we also have a large part of our population uh, that are our field service uh, reps, and those reps may be working at hospitals uh, or traveling and may not have access to their laptops. So one of the uh, big bonuses uh, that we got out of this system is that we were able to set it up to be mobile friendly so that everything that I'm going to show you in the tool, you can do every last one of those things from your iPhone, your Android, your, your iPad, from any, any mobile device uh, directly through your web browser, which uh, again, for us was a huge advantage to be able to, to see what cases I have open, to open a case, uh, to do approvals from my cell phone. Uh, even if I am in the office, I'm one of those people that's always uh, got my phone with me if I'm in a meeting, and the fact that I can, I can see everything from my mobile device was a huge seller for us as well. So uh, before I show you our system, uh, I want to kind of show you the out of the box. So when we first saw the out of the box um, service now HR module, there was a lot of things that we really liked. Um, the search functionality was great. You know, as you can see on the screenshot, as, as you type in the word payroll, any knowledge articles that you have on it are going to show up. Any forms related to it are going to show up. You know, underneath that we have a, a lot of other sections on this front page. But one of the things that we, we felt was um, it was just a little too busy. Um, it's great to have a lot of information, but, but from my, my perspective, sometimes having too much information can actually be worse than not having enough information. If people have to dig around and look around to try to find what they're after, then eventually they're gonna give up, they're gonna pick up the phone, and they're gonna call somebody instead of using the tool. So the system has a lot of functionality, and depending on your needs, you may need some of that functionality around, you can set up a lot of different categories and then have all the different forms under those categories. And while this is great if you have a ton of forms, we all really only wanted to have a few, and we didn't want people to have to guess which category they were going to. We wanted everything right on the front page. So our, our, our real goal was simplify. Um, I've also found that if users have to spend too many clicks to get to something that they're after, they're not going to do it. They're going to give up. They're going to walk away. Uh, and so while what we had in the out-of-the-box uh, non-configured service now was better than what we had before, it still, in my opinion, was a couple too many clicks for, for our needs. And so we wanted to make it, again, as simple and easy to use as possible. So what I want to show you is our user interface. And I've, I've got the slide up, but I'm actually going to pull up our system itself and show you live in our, our training server. I do want to point out everything on our training server is fake data, so I'm not showing any, uh, any actual salary information or anything else for the company on, on purpose, but it is the exact same configuration that we have on our production system. So um, just want to verify, can you see my screen still with the, with the web browser? Well, yes, Donald, we can. Perfect, perfect. Uh, okay, so right now I'm on our training server. And when we come here, you could see that um, when I'd shown you the out-of-the-box, you had to go through the different um, catalogs to get to the forms. We pulled them right to the front. Everything that you need to do is right here on one page. We have big graphical buttons. We made them more colorful. We didn't want it to be all monotone. Uh, so we added in uh, graphics for each of the buttons. When you go to the forms, you'll see those same graphics on there. Uh, we have big blue buttons, very easy to see, very easy to follow, where you can see your open cases, your closed cases, et cetera. Um, if I have anything that I need to approve, it's right here at the top. I can click on my approvals, and I can view what those approvals are, go in and approve them through the system. Uh, and just to wanted to mention, you can also do approvals via email. Um, if I want to search through um, the site, I can use this search right here. And so I'll show you a lot of this as, as we go, go through here. Um, but uh, the primary thing to, that I want to start with is the various forms that we have. So uh, some of our forms are specific to employees, uh, and, and all employees can see them. Some of our forms are specific to managers. Some are specific to HR business partners. Uh, and then we also have some back-end forms that, are, that aren't shown here that are used by our, uh, what we call HR Connect, by our, by our shared service group. So right here, I can see the general HR inquiry and leave of absence are our, our employee-facing forms. We do voluntary separations, our manager-only change of status, which I'll show you in a minute, things like salary change, change of manager. 
These are only visible by a manager. So if I'm, I'm an employee who's not a manager, I won't see these when I log in. Involuntary separations is only visible by an HR business partner. So if I'm a, an, an employee, I'm only gonna see these two forms, leave of absence and general HR inquiry. If I'm a manager, I'll see those two plus the change of status and voluntary separations. If I'm a business partner, I'll also see, uh, HR business partner, I'll also see this one. Uh, and so we love the fact that we can make this dynamic as we're adding additional um, forms. We can make uh, the requirements so that it's country specific, so you only see country specific ones and really keep it tailored to the audience that's, that's logging into the system. So our catch-all, so each of these forms is a very specific form for a specific purpose, but we knew that we needed to have kind of a generic catch-all form where, where users can just enter in what they're after. So that's what the general HR inquiry is for. So if I click on the general HR inquiry, what it does is it takes me to a form where I can say, hey, who am I opening this for? And it's essentially just, I select what category my case is. Is it benefits and pay? recruiting and candidate referral, uh, employee personal work data, managing work and learning, or all other. If it doesn't fit any of these, I can choose all other. So let's say I had a benefits question, and then the rest, and if I wanted to see a description of what these are, I can check this checkbox, and the description pops out. Um, and then it's essentially just a text box. So they're gonna put in, I have a question about my benefits, Whatever their question is, whatever their concern is, they're gonna put it right here. And it's essentially gonna create a case that comes to the HR Connect group uh, that has what the category is and their question. Uh, the HR Connect group can then change the category if it, if it was miscategorized, but that's it. If they wanna add an attachment, so I have a question about my benefits, I'm attaching uh, a copy of my, my latest form, they can add an attachment here. But essentially all you do is select a category, fill in this text box, add any attachments, and click Submit. And once you do that, it's now created a case in the system. Here's the case number. I, as the person submitting it, am going to, uh, am going to uh, get an email about that and we'll be able to um, see any updates via email as well. And what's nice is once I've created that case, if I go to my homepage, and I'm gonna go into a couple other cases afterwards, but if I go to my homepage and go to open cases, I can see that case right here in my open cases. And if I click on this, I can see that the case was created. But let's say I forgot to do something in the case. I could say, hey, I forgot to add, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as I click send, it's now updated the case to have that additional information. If the um, person in, in our HR Connect group has an update, it's gonna show on here as well. So again, if I go to my back to home and to my open cases, uh, I have a case that I created yesterday, and if it was updated by the HR Connect group, our shared service group, I'm gonna see what those updates are in here, and I'll be able to track what's going on with the cases. Um, part of the feedback we've gotten uh, from uh, other case management tools that we've put in place in the past is that people would create a ticket or a case, and they would have no idea whether somebody was working on it, where it was at, what the status was. So um, one of our configuration requests to close is to make this page front and center uh, when you log into your open cases. We didn't want it to show just the details of the case. We really wanted to show this activity log so that from my smartphone or from my laptop at any point in time, I can see exactly what's going on with my case. If I've got 20 updates, I'll see all 20 of those updates here from the beginning up till now. And this is live as I type something in. If I type, thank you. It's going to update the work notes on the back end, and I'm going to see it right here every time I log in and, and see where they're at with my case. So again, visibility and the comfort of knowing that somebody's working on your case were really important to us at Varian, and so we, we really want to make this front and center as well. Uh, so that was our general HR inquiry form, and again, that's, that's purely a catch-all. It's, it's a text box that they can put in whatever they want. But we also have a lot of very specific processes that, that people need to do. Uh, for example, <clears throat> this change of status form for our managers. If I go into change of status, uh, I can use this for several things. So I, I, I'm gonna go in and as a manager, I'll see my employees in here. I'll on, I'm only on the manager forms able to select my employees. This was our specification. We didn't want managers to be able to select other people's employees. Um, so we set it up so you could see your employees and we decided to go two levels down instead of just one level down in case a manager's out, their manager could submit a form on their behalf. 
but they can come in here and they can select an employee and uh, they select what the effective date is of the change. So let's say this is effective on Friday. Uh, I could add in any comments, but when I come down here, I have several options. So uh, am I doing a salary change, a location change, work schedule change, position change, cost center change, or manager change? So we used to have in one of our old systems several different forms that you'd have to go to for these. And we didn't want managers to have to go to five different forms and fill out five different forms for the same process. If I'm doing a salary change and a position change, I just check this box, salary comes up. Uh, and I can see what's their current salary, type in their new salary. So let's say I want to go from 320,000 a year to 500,000 a year. I can put that in here, the reason for the salary change, uh, this is a base pay increase. Uh, but if this person is also doing a position change, I can come in here, check the position box, and so and fill this out as well. So I can I can either do just one of these, or I can do multiple of these all in one form. And one of the things I loved about these forms is the fact that we could make it dynamic like this. We could make it so that you could select different options and do more than one at once. Again, we don't want managers to have to go to five different forms to fill out uh, one set of information. This really simplifies it. If I have comments about the reason I'm doing it, et cetera, I can add that in, attachments, I can add that in. And again, once I click submit, it creates the case for me. And even from right here, I can click on here to view, and it's gonna take me right to that page that I showed you earlier where you can see the updates. I can say, hey, I forgot to add in X, Y, Z. I forgot to add this attachment, and I can see it right here. I can also, for these forms where I'm filling out um, information, you know, the general nature inquiry, it was just a text box for here. We had several different options to select. And so I could see right here on the right-hand side, uh, salary change is what I change. It's true. And the current salary is this. The new salary is this. Uh, I see I didn't change the location. I didn't change this. So I can see all of that information right here on one very simple-to-see page. And again, uh, this is mobile-friendly. The managers, employees can see this from their mobile device as well. And I'll show you how that, how that looks in just a few minutes. So... I'm going to go ahead and go back to my, my home page here. So uh, the next form I want to show you, and it's just because it's a different style, is our leave of absence application. So I showed you one where it's just purely a text box. I showed you one where you have multiple options that you can select from. I want to show you an example of a dynamic form that we have in, in here. Um, so we have certain cases where, uh, depending on what option a person selects, there may be uh, different fields that need to be filled out. So when I come into this um, leave of absence application, it has some disclaimers that we put up top. Hey, if it's this type, we want you to call our, our um, vendor directly. But if it's any other type, then fill this out below. And so what they're going to do is they're going to come in here uh, and they're going to select their leave type. So you see right now there's nothing I can fill out except for the leave type. But once I select what type of leave it is, is this paid bonding leave or is this personal leave? As soon as I select paid bonding leave, all of a sudden I have some additional fields that I need to fill out. Uh, and it's not gonna let me see the little red asterisk. This means it's not gonna let me submit the form until I've filled out these fields. But uh, if I switch from paid bonding leave to personal leave, it's a different set of fields that are required. And so what, what's nice about this is imagine if you have people in multiple countries, you can have a country drop-down list and depending on which country, there's five different fields that are required for Germany and, and three different fields for France. And so you can really get very um, specific in, in these dynamic forms and, and make it so that as they select each one, it's going to require different sets of information for them to continue. So here, if I, I could say it's for a birth of a child, that child was born here. Uh, am I going on continuous leave? And I get even more dynamic here. Am I going on continuous leave where I'm, I'm leaving and I'm not coming back for several weeks? If so, uh, I'm leaving this date, and I'm going to be gone for one week, five weeks, and as I as I change the sorry as I change the number of weeks, it's going to automatically calculate uh, the end date and uh, submit that. So, uh, oops, bear bear with me. Let me go back to the leave of absence form. I did want to show you that uh, this part I accidentally submitted. So give me just a second to go back in. Um, but even that part of the form was dynamic so that uh, I can either do continuous leave or I can do, uh, again, let me go into a bonding leave. So I've already put in the dynamic here, but if I choose intermittent leave, instead of having one field, I have multiple fields for the dates where I can say, here's the start date for this, and I put it in one week increments. So 
again, continuous leave, it gives me one field, intermittent leave gives me a bunch. So again, I, I just wanted to show this as examples of what you can do in the system. You can have as basic as our general inquiry where it's just a text field, that's it. You can go to something where you have multiple options to select, like our change of status where you saw a salary change, you saw a work location change, et cetera. And you could go into the, these dynamic types of forms where depending on what you select, everything below it is gonna change and require different sets of information. And this to us is very powerful for several reasons. One is it allows us to be very specific in it, um, but two, and I'll get into this a bit later, one of our key drivers was automation. We wanna automate wherever we possibly can. If I can eliminate the need for a person to go in and enter data into the system, I'm gonna do that because it's gonna give me better data integrity and it's gonna save me time and money as a company. So if we can put these fields in here in a way that our HR systems can recognize it and have all that data here, we can send it directly into our SAP system versus having to have somebody on our shared service team manually enter it in. So if I can have a manager fill this out in the exact format that I'm gonna need it in our SAP system, then I can set it up so that the system is gonna automatically, after the approvals are done, send this information over to SAP with no human intervention whatsoever on the part of our, our shared services team, which saves our company time, money, and resources, and gives us better data integrity because you don't have human error. So uh, again, a lot of options when it comes to these forms, uh, and you can have as many or as few as you want. Uh, again, in the out-of-the-box um, UI, uh, they have several categories, and once you choose a category, you'll see the forms under here. We at Varian just made the decision to put them all in one category and bring it right to the front. We didn't want people to have to click through the different categories to get to it. But if you do have 20 different forms for benefits and 50 for talent acquisition, maybe you do want to uh, put them behind those, those uh, different categories in the system. Um, so another thing that you'll see here is, uh, well, I, I showed you the open cases, so let me go, go into that again. At any point in time, any of these cases that I open or any case that's open on my behalf, I can see from my open cases. I'll see each of them, I'll see when it's open. And again, I can click on any of these. And when I click on it, it's gonna take me to the, uh, the page that shows all of the information around the case when it was created, any comments back and forth, any attachments, all of that will show here. Uh, I have similar on here for closed cases. Uh, this is our training server. I don't think I have any closed cases, but it would look the exact same. I would see all of the cases that I, I'd closed out. And so if there's uh, one that I felt was closed incorrectly, I could put a comment in there and say, hey, please reopen this. Uh, for our needs, uh, one of our big concerns is we don't want, employees get very frustrated if they feel that you closed their case before it was actually resolved. So one of the things that we did was we set it up so that when a case is first marked as complete, it sends an email to the uh, employee saying, hey, we believe we've closed your, your, your incident. If you don't feel it is, just reply to this email or click this link and it'll reopen the case. And, and that way, if it was closed in error, they're not feeling frustrated, they're not feeling ignored, they're able to quickly and easily reopen it. But uh, again, at any point in time, they can come in here and see their closed cases as, as well. Uh, then we have FAQs. And again, you'll see up here we have knowledge base and down here we have FAQs. For us, it's the same thing. We combine these into one, uh, one thing, uh, but different people like the different terms and, and use the different terms throughout the company. So we decided to keep both labels here. That way, whichever one people are used to, they can see. So when I come in here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this big button right here for FAQs. And again, we went nice, simple with the graphics, big buttons. Uh, when I click on knowledge base, I'm gonna get taken to uh, the knowledge base homepage uh, or FAQs uh, if you prefer. And I'm gonna see the top rated articles. For, for each article in the system, uh, each person who, who views that article can give it a, a star rating. And depending on how high the star rating is, you can sort the articles based off of the top rated. You can also sort based off of how many people have viewed that article. Uh, I'm on our training server, so most of these articles haven't been viewed very much, but if you go onto our production server, there may be one that was viewed 79 times or 100 times or how, however many times, and you can see those here. And so this is just a way to quickly and easily flag these are the common questions that we're having. And so if I, as an employee, go in, I may have that same question and it's gonna be flagged right here. If it's not flagged right here, uh, I can go into these different categories and, and see. So if I click on benefits and pay, there's an awful lot of them here on our, on our uh, training server. On our production server, we did limit the number quite a bit because um, for us, a lot of these 
uh, knowledge articles are for our back end use. If somebody at our shared service center gets a question, we want them to be able to you have a knowledge article that tells them how to answer that question so that all of our service shared service people are answering the question in the same way uh, and we get consistency. But uh, we, we went through all of the articles and determined which ones should be employee facing and which ones should only be uh, back end uh, shared service facing, as well as which ones are, are visible to just HR business partners or just managers. And so when I come in here, I would see all of these different articles in here. And if there's one that I like uh, or that I need to look into, I can click on it and see. And I'll show you how, in a second how to find this via the, um, the uh, search which is the way I think most people go to it, but you can also go in by category, come in here, read the article, and then you can add your comments and rate it. Hey, uh, I noticed that you didn't mention this. Can you, can you maybe create an article on this? Or whatever I want to type in here, I can add my comments in here. Hey, great article. I really love it. Thanks for your help. You know, whatever I, I put in here, you can, you can see those comments in here, and you can submit a rating on here. And then that's going to drive up the, um, the uh, top rated and the views for the for those knowledge articles. So again, I can I can do that from going to the knowledge base where I'm going to see it by cat by category. Um, just like I was just showing you, we have the different categories, but I could also go to my home page or anywhere in here. I don't know if you noticed on the last page, but I have a little search but button at the top. But I can come in here and use this search and the search is going to search through the entire system to see is there any knowledge articles for what you're searching on and is there any forms that relate to that. So Let's say I had a question about salary. I could come in here and I could type in the word salary. And when I type that in, I'm seeing a lot of knowledge articles. So this little paper uh, next to it means that it's a knowledge article. So um, how is my salary increase determined during the annual salary planning process uh, and so on. So I could be more specific or just type in the word salary. But you'll notice that not only do I see all of the knowledge articles, but I also see that change of status form. And that's the one that I showed you earlier where a manager can go into the change of status form and change an employee's salary. So when I type in the word salary, it's flagging any knowledge articles and any forms that are related to that. So uh, not only can I search for knowledge articles, but I can search for forms in here so that if I'm a new manager and I don't realize that this is for employee salary, if I type in the word salary up here, it's gonna, it's gonna take me to that search. And, uh, and when I click on the form, it's the same as clicking on it here. It takes me into, into the form. And so you'll notice that while I'm here, I, I'm also able to see at the top of the search. So maybe this isn't what I was after. I can type in a search here again, and it's gonna pull up everything else. So uh, again, the search is gonna follow you everywhere you go. Uh, the other thing that we put in here that we wanted to make sure we followed every, everywhere you go, this whole top bar will, but this bottom bar here, um, we really wanted to drive self-service. Uh, there's a lot of research done that um, it costs the company a lot more money uh, and takes a lot more time uh, if people are, are calling you or stopping by directly versus if they're they're entering the form into the system. But so so I think our, one of our primary goals is we wanted to drive people to use the forms as much as possible, but we don't want people to feel like they can't pick up the phone and call us uh, because we'd rather solve their issue than have them frustrated. So what, one of the things that we made sure that we did is right here at the bottom, you'll see the, e the phone number and the email address, uh, as well as the times that, that the uh, Shared Service Center is available so that they know what number to call uh, or can click on this and generate an email. Uh, and if you click on this, it's not only gonna open an, an email in Outlook, if you click on it from your mobile phone, it's gonna open uh, your email in your mobile phone and start an email to them. If, uh, and if you click on the phone number, it'll let you dial the, the phone number as well. So again, anywhere you go in the system from your laptop or your mobile device, you're gonna see this top bar and you're gonna see this bottom bar with all the pertinent, pertinent information for you. So going back to the homepage. So um, again, we have the search, we have all the different forms. We have our open cases, closed cases, FAQs, which are the same as the knowledge base. Uh, you can also see your approvals on here and go in and directly approve something in the system. So if I click on this, I'm going to be taken to our approval page. Uh, yep, I, I, I agree with this. This is fine. Uh, if I want to see the history, again, all those comments, any attachments, whatever else, I'm going to see it right here, and I can approve or reject this. Uh, we've also given our, our um, managers and HR business partners the ability to approve via email. So if they want to see all the information, they can log in here and see it from their phone or, or um, computer. 
uh, or they can just reply to the email with approve and it's going to uh, approve it as well. Uh, and uh, one of the things we did, we, you, we did uh, disable the ability to show your um, full profile, but there's some additional options you could put in around the profile if you wanted to. And then the last thing, this is something that we're not really utilizing fully yet, but we will add more in is our HR links. And it's basically just, uh, it's hyperlinks to our other, other software systems. So nothing spectacular there yet, but we will be adding links to more and more of our, our systems as, as time goes on. Um, so uh, again, what our real goal was, let's make this as user-friendly as possible. Let's put all of the information they need right there on their homepage and, and make it as few clicks as possible. So the other thing I want to show you, and I'll, I'll show you a couple of screenshots as, as well, but um, we set this entire page up, um, and uh, I, I just want to really highlight Close for their, their um, awesome ability to create the UI on this. Uh, this homepage, we were originally told, could not be done with out of the box. Said, yeah, that looks great. Your, your customer, your internal customers will love it, but it can't be done. So we reached out to Close, and they pulled in one of their, their expert UI consultants who said, yep, I can do this. I, and I could do it fully with out of the box functionality and was able to put it in place uh, relatively quickly. So uh, again, this is something that uh, I was very impressed with Close's expertise on. And what we wanted to do is make this entire page set up so that it automatically resizes, it automatically fits for mobile devices. I don't want people to have to install a separate app. We may still ask people to later as an option, but I want people to be able to get to this directly from their from any device with a web browser, including a cell phone. So if I take this, click this and drag it, you want to see what it's going to look like when I go onto a mobile device. Notice that as I as I shrink it, it automatically resizes. So if I'm on from my iPhone, my screen is going to look just like this. And you'll see I'll have a little button here. I can scroll down and I'll see exactly this. So from my, my cell phone, I can click this and it's going to launch the email. I can click open cases. And when I click open cases, it's automatically resized. I can go in here and see, all right, what's going on with this change status request? And I can see all the comments, everything that's going on on here. And again, it's automatically resized to my, my phone. If I've got an iPhone that's more narrow, if I've got an iPhone Plus and it's a little bit bigger, if I've got an iPad, it's going to automatically resize to fit the, the shape of whatever device you're on so that if I'm logging in from the road, I'm in a hospital, I have no Wi-Fi there, but I have my cell phone, I could come in here and submit a change of status form. Uh, I can come in here and do a general HR inquiry. I can view all my open cases, approve something, whatever I need to do from the comfort of my mobile device. I wanted this in everyone's hands anywhere they go so there's no barrier of entry. If you put a barrier of entry in, they're not going to use it. They're going to go to their local HR person. They're going to pick up the phone and call people instead of using the tool. And we were able to very quickly get to a point with, within uh, just a few weeks of our go live of having uh, over 60, just, uh, it was between 60 and 70% within just the first few weeks of our cases were coming through the user interface, which is huge. Uh, we have over 3,000 employees in the US. Our initial rollout was to the US. And the fact that more than 60% of our cases were coming through the user interface within the first month of our go live, I, I thought was huge. And we're continuing to see uh, that trend improve and improve as, as time goes on. So again, very happy with the work that Close did on this front. Uh, so jumping back to, to the slides, again, this is just a couple of screenshots literally taken from my phone. I did some screen captures of my phone of exactly what I was showing you and how you could scroll up and up and down in there. So um, switching uh, topics a little bit, uh, one of our other goals uh, I mentioned earlier was we wanted to we want to save time and money through automation. Uh, every time you have to have somebody manually do something, it's taking time. There's a lot of room for error if somebody enters something wrong, and it's costing the company money. So anywhere where we could start to automate things, we're improving the process. We're saving ourselves time and money. So we worked with the close team uh, as well as our internal IT team. Uh, at, and our other vendors to create some interfaces between our different systems, as well as to automate some of the processes in here. So a couple examples of this uh, on the self-service side. Uh, if an employee fills out a form in the HR portal, the system is automatically sending, uh, setting that out for approval. So one of the reasons that I, I really liked ServiceNow 
is they have a great workflow management uh, tool in there where you can really build custom workflows however you want and have the system automatically do stuff. And one of the more basic parts of that is sending stuff out for approval. What we didn't want to have happen is we, didn't, we don't want our, our shared service employees to have to do anything for, until the form has been approved. If, if they go in and start doing all the work and then the manager or the HR business partner rejects it, they've, they've spent time that they shouldn't have spent. So the first thing that, that happens when a, an employee submits a form is it goes out for approval. Only after it's approved in our current process does it create a case. It creates a case, uh, or sorry, it doesn't make the case visible to our HR Connect employees, our shared service employees. In our current process, um, when, when the approval happens, it then goes to our HR Connect employees and they're able to see all of that data and they go into our SAP HR system and they manually update the records with the new salary, with the new manager, whatever it is. What we're working on now, uh, next is a, an integration with SAP so that it goes through the approval and as soon as it's approved, instead of it having to be manually entered by somebody, ServiceNow sends that data directly into SAP, the transaction automatically happens in SAP and and uh, no manual intervention is required whatsoever. So again, the manager fills out a form saying salary is going from $5 a, a month to $6 a month. As soon as it's approved by, by their manager and by the HR business partner, it automatically goes into, into SAP, no manual intervention. We've saved time, we've saved money. Um, the other one that we, we have uh, mostly in place now and we're working on that last part is on the, on the uh, integration with our recruiting tool. So we use Brass Ring for our, our recruiting. And one of the main things that our, our shared service group does is creates new employees in our HR systems. So what we've set it up to do is that as soon as the new employee accepts their offer letter in Brass Ring, our recruiting tool, Brass Ring takes all of the fields from all the different forms that we have uh, with information like their, their name, their address, all the information that we need to create their profile in SAP, and it sends that information over to ServiceNow. ServiceNow uh, in the HR module creates a case and in that case has all of the employee's information so that the shared service employee, instead of having to go to Brass Ring and look in five different forms, they have all the information about the employee in one place. And right now what they do is they take that information, they verify that's correct, and they go into SAP and they enter it in. What we're working on next is fully automating this so that uh, Brass Ring sends over to, to um, ServiceNow the employee's information. The shared service employee just verifies that data, makes sure it's correct, makes any updates if needed, and then they hit a button in, in ServiceNow, and they don't even have to go into SAP. Uh, for those of you who have SAP, it's got some good qualities, but it's, it's not always the most user-friendly, and it could take a little time to do stuff. We're going to send that information directly into SAP so that we no longer have to manually do the pre-hire and hire transactions. It's fully automated. Sends from our recruiting system to ServiceNow, verify in ServiceNow, send it over to, to SAP. And again, this, this is gonna save our company a lot of time, a lot of money, and it's gonna remove a lot of that, the um, issues that we have where somebody enters something incorrectly, they accidentally skip a screen when they're entering in the data and, and so on. So again, this is a huge win for us as a company. It's already been a huge win with just the integration we have now. Once we get this last step with the integration back to SAP, it's gonna be even bigger. Um, so the, the last, a uh, major thing that we wanted to get out of the system is we really wanted to be able to use the data to drive continuous improvements. So uh, when we talked to the people who were handling a lot of these uh, transactions before we implemented the shared services group, we'd get a lot of anecdotal answers about what they were working on. They'd say, hey, I get a lot of requests for this, I get a lot of questions for that, but they didn't have any specifics around how many cases of this are you getting, how many of that are you getting. And one of the great things about having a case management tool like ServiceNow and again, this is one of the things I really liked on the IT side, which is one of the reasons we started looking at ServiceNow in the first place, is it's got great reporting capabilities and all of the reporting capabilities are ad hoc, so you can add your own specific requirements to it. So now one of the things that we can do is we can see how many cases are we getting this month, this year, et, et cetera, and how many of those are each category or each subcategory or this process or that process. So if we see that there's a large amount of cases coming in for something, we can dig into it and see if there's something we could do to lower the amount of cases we're getting. Um, if we're getting a ton of requests for something data entry related, then maybe we should automate that process and build some interfaces with SAP or whichever system so that 
instead of having 50 cases a month for it, it's fully automated uh, and, and done. If we're getting a ton of questions about something, maybe we need to send out a communication or add a knowledge base article about that. And then by adding that self-service, instead of having a whole bunch of cases that require somebody in our shared service center to look at it, uh, instead it can, be, uh, it can be fully automated and people can get the information they need themselves. If there's other problem areas, you know, maybe there's changes we can put in place to fix those problem areas. So again, the reporting capabilities in the tool are phenomenal, and it's really helping us to see what is it that our business needs and what changes can we make to, to satisfy those needs uh, better for them. There's some things that always come through the case management system, but anywhere we can make improvements, we wanna really target that. So I, I think I may have gone a little over my, my time on here, but we did want to open this up to questions, concerns, feedback, uh, et cetera. Okay, and again, so we do have Mike on the phone if there's any technical questions. Uh, Mike, Mike is really our, our ServiceNow guru uh, from Close, and he can really talk to you about how we put some of this stuff in place. Yes, Donald, thank you so much. Uh, that was a very informative session on the HR module uh, within ServiceNow. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass control to Mike Nelson, uh, who is going to tell us things from uh, more of a technical perspective. Okay, let me know when you can see my screen, all right? Uh, yes, I can see your screen now, Mike. Please go ahead. Okay, so I just wanted to expand a, a little bit on what Donald had to say about integration. Um, he's a tough act to follow, and I don't have a lot just because it seems like a lot of stuff done on the back end um, it isn't as interesting. But uh, basically, we used REST to communicate um, from the SAP and brass ring system in, in to ServiceNow. Um, this, this screen here just shows that we're, we're going to go into a temporary file um, and, and do some processing from there. And the whole idea is being able to enter in employee information in one system and have it passed uh, into ServiceNow to create uh, both an HR profile as well as a user if, if it hasn't already been done. Okay. So in, in this example here, um, I kind of cut off the top a little bit just to, to keep Varian's uh, information sacred. Um, but we're just going to put in some raw data here into the bottom and granted we can fill in a, a lot more information here um, there's different columns that you can see that uh, is being utilized but for the sake of time I'm just going to make this pretty simple okay so in this example uh, the SAP would uh, send this information uh, via REST so this is just a quick example you can see that this file has been created. Um, again, like I said before, it, it goes into a temporary table. Uh, you can see that Mr. Close is automatic or is created in this import set. And then from there, um, it created an HR profile. So there you can see Mr. Close created um, automatically and the information that we passed into it is listed there and again like I said I could have added a, a bunch more information but um, for the sake of time I just kept this pretty simple okay like I said my show and there's not a whole lot to it very simple um, and uh, I think that like Donald said um, being able to do this all in one place is is very beneficial to uh, alleviate error but also you know just to save on time or frustration of one customer or, or one employee having to enter in information in one system and then either having to do it again in another system it just become cumbersome and frustrating so we helped with that I did want to leave time for questions and I see that we got about 10 minutes left so I'm hoping that we have a few questions. Uh, yes, we do actually. So thank you, Mike. Uh, I'm going to uh, change back the control. Um, okay, we do have a few questions out here. Uh, Gita Kulati is asking, uh, what is your core HR system? And the question is for Donald. 
Yes, yeah, so our, our primary backend system is SAP. So we have we have several systems on the SAP platform. Um, as many of you may know, SAP has uh, purchased uh, Success Factors several years ago, who then in turn had, had purchased Plateau. So we have Success Factors for performance, compensation, and uh, learning management. Uh, and but on the back end, it's SAP. On the recruiting side, we currently have Brass Ring. Uh, which IBM actually bought the company that makes Brass Ring uh, several years ago. So recruiting, it's Brass Ring, Talent, Comp, and LMS is Success Factors, and uh, Core HR is SAP. Okay. Um, the next question is from Steve, and uh, he wants to know if you can show your approval screen in the service portal. So do you think this is something uh, you can quickly show, Donald, or... Uh, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give me just a second. So, so this is where uh, in in the service portal, uh, I'm going to see the my approvals button up top. Uh, and can you see my screen or? Well, I'm just changing you as and making you as the presenter. Oh, okay. okay. Let me know once you can see it. Okay. Yeah, I can see your screen now. Please go ahead. And you're seeing the right screen as well, right? The one with the the web browser. Yes, the one with the web browser and uh, yeah, the main page, yes. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, so up in the upper right-hand side, you'll see the My Approvals. Again, you'll also get an email as a manager. That email you can either approve via the email or there's a link that takes you directly to the Approvals page. When I click My Approvals, if there's 10 of them, I'll see all 10 of them. Right now, I only have one. When I click on this, it takes me to a page that has all of the information for the case. So this is a leave of absence. Here's when they're leaving. Uh, here's how long they'll be gone, all of that information. If this was a salary change, it would show what the salary was, what the salary is going to be. Uh, so all the pertinent information is going to show right here. Um, the manager or HR business partner, for us, the approvers are managers and HR business partners for a lot of these. But you could have payroll or, or finance uh, be involved with as well if you wanted to. Um, but then down here, I can see the communication stream. Most most likely, I'm really only caring about the top part, but if I wanted to see the communications down here or any attachments, I'd be able to view those as an approver as well. And then it's very simple. I have an approve button and I have a reject button. If I approve, it goes on. If I reject it, uh, it doesn't. So as soon as I click approve, and the case has now been updated with my approval. If it requires a second approver, it's gonna go to them next. Uh, we set ours up to go, I believe all the ones that require two levels go to the manager first, and then the HR business partner. If it's a manager form, like the change of status, then it would go to that manager's manager for approval and then to the HR business partner to, to uh, do the final approval uh, before it goes to our shared service group. Okay, all right, that's great. Um, the next question, again from Geeta Gulati. So she says, uh, it's interesting that you are leveraging ServiceNow for change status. What was the rationale for using ServiceNow as opposed to your core HR system? Uh, so one of my main goals is we, we have a lot of different places to go for a lot of things. So uh, uh, so on the ServiceNow side, we, we have in um, SAP, we have employee self-service, uh, which is very clunky. Uh, it takes eight clicks just to get to the form in many cases, and so we started to move away from that. We've, we've explored, SAP now has what they call Fiori, which is a more user-friendly um, way of doing things, and we started creating some of these forms. Uh, actually, we just done our first proof of concept several months ago in Fiori, and we took it down from having eight clicks just to get to the form to just a couple of clicks. Um, but having some of the forms there and some of them in here, uh, we, we really didn't want people to have to go to five different places for things. So some of these are going to be feeding into SAP. Some of them may, are, may be feeding into our benefits systems and so on. And so we really wanted to put it all in one place. So for us, uh, we have a one-stop shop here when it comes to all the forms. We also just finished going live with a big uh, analytics project where we took the data from our SAP brass ring, LMS, and, and success factors put all that data into a central system quick view and created a dashboard for managers that has data from all those systems in one spot. But the name of the game for me is one-stop shops. You know, I want managers to have, and employees to have one-stop shop for all their forms. 
I, I don't want them to have to even care what system it's going to. I want them to go to one spot and it feeds whatever system needs to feed. And the same with the, the reporting and analytics on our, our dashboard we just released. One stop shop, doesn't matter which system uh, the data is in, I want managers to have one stop to go to to see all their data. Okay, great. Um, next question from Srikant Kanduri. He wants to know if um, benefits and compensation are new modules in service now. Uh, so as far as I know, I don't believe there's a separate module for them. There, there are several out of the box forms. Essentially with service now, from what I've seen, and again, Mike can, can probably talk to this more than I can, it's basically work, you have the forms and you have the workflow management. So you can set them up to do anything that you want to do. They come with some out of the box already configured forms, but we actually created most of these forms ourselves, working with, with uh, Mike and, and the team to develop them. Um, so all the benefits stuff, it, it's essentially the same as all these others where it's just a series of forms and, and then those forms trigger workflows on the back end. So anything that you wanna do, you can do through the exact same process uh, regardless of whether it's benefits, whether it's uh, compensation, whatever else, they can all be done with a front end form and then workflow management. I don't believe there's a separate module for that. It's all part of the HR module. Donald's absolutely right. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, another question from Srikant again, and he wants to know that if their HR system is something, uh, is another system basically like Workday or Oracle HCM, uh, you know, would it still support integration? Uh, it, I believe all of them do. Uh, it, it's basically just m most of the systems have actually gotten better and better on that. A lot of them have open APIs now. Uh, again, Mike can talk a lot more to that, but uh, so far all of our systems were able to integrate. BrassRing was probably our toughest one uh, to get set up initially, but it wasn't actually the system that was the issue. It was just getting somebody you know, on the phone to, to work with us on that. Um, but Workday, as far as I know, is relatively easy to integrate with, uh, and I believe they're open API. So I, I don't see any issue with, with that. Mike, I don't know if you have an experience with Workday or with any of the other systems, but I'm assuming it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Workday actually has a plugin too that um, ServiceNow has, so you, that also can be added. Um, with, with what we've done, with Varian, uh, we created all our own APIs. So if there is something specific or, or special that needs to be done um, through Workday, you can create your own API. Okay. Uh, next question from uh, Gita again. What was your implementation timeframe for HR and how big was your team? Uh, we do everything in very, very, very tight timelines with very, very, very small teams. But uh, I, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. It was, uh, what did we do? Was it three months or four months implementation? Mike, do you remember? I want to say it was four months. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, approximately four months. We, we made the decision to go with a soft go live. Uh, we, we were implementing this system at the same time as we were implementing the group. So we had a whole new set of employees that were coming on board in Atlanta at the same time as, as the tool. So what we did is we actually went live without the portal. So everything that you see on the front end was configured, it was ready to go, but we didn't communicate that to anybody for a month. Uh, and so what we did was we had employees and managers continue to send phone calls, do phone calls and send emails. And then on the back end, the HR Connect group would create the cases and use the system. And that gave them a month to get familiar with the processes which were new to them, but also to get familiar with the system. Uh, and then when we went live with the front end, they were already familiar with it. They were able to jump in and, and do it. For our Budapest Go Live, we're, we're setting the timeline right now, uh, and we're going to be even more aggressive because I think we have most of most of it in place already from our U.S. deployment, um, and we're, we're going to go straight into the front end being live. Um, but again, I, I believe it was four months, and, and uh, as far as the size of the team goes, uh, we had other extended parts of the team and there is overlap because again, we had the process work and the team going live at the same time as this. Uh, but we had oh, about six people uh, dedicated to the team, six to eight people dedicated to the, the team on top of the other projects they were working on, the other, other day jobs. So everybody was really juggling a lot at the time, but we were able to get to it uh, in, in a relatively quick manner. Uh, one of the stories I like to tell and I'll try to keep it quick is 
this was one of the most anticlimactic go lives I've ever had. I've, I've been doing major system implementations, major global system implementations for over a decade now. And every time you go live, uh, I expect something's going to crash and burn. There's going to be something that goes wrong that you have to jump on. So we went live on a Friday on purpose so that if anything went wrong, we'd, we'd have the whole weekend to, to fix it. I flew out to Atlanta. We were all ready for the go live. We went live on Friday. We all thought we were going to be in the office all weekend working on things, made no plans whatsoever, and nothing happened. People were using the system, everything worked, and no major issues. And I actually had to figure out what I was going to do that weekend because I had made no plans because I assumed we were all going to be hunkered down. So uh, in, in, again, over a decade of doing major implementations, this I think was the first time that that had happened where it was just everything went off without a hitch. And I, I think I have to give credit to that to, to three things. I think our, our internal team, I think, did a great job on it. Uh, I think the closed team was amazing uh, and, and really made sure that everything was working correctly. And then the product itself, um, it, it really is a robust and, and good product. That's not to say we haven't had some issues since, since Go Live, but it hasn't been anything major. Um, and so I, I, I really feel that you know, even with the tight timeline that we have, and with everybody working on several major projects at the same time, we were able to pull it off in a four month period. Okay, that's great. So we do have a couple more questions, but I think since uh, since we're gonna be out of time, uh, I'm going to take them uh, offline and pass all the questions to you, Don and Mike. Um, okay. uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, and to attendees, if you have any more questions or even suggestions, on topics for future webinars from Cloves, please email us at sales at clovesinc.com or uh, SHRUTI, that is Shruti at clovesinc.com. Again, thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Um, see you all next month for the next webinar and with a new topic. Thanks everyone. Thank you all.